be profited. And then if they'd like to comment briefly on condition three, which has been mentioned, and what impact any of these things could possibly have on a conservation area when these houses have only very recently been put in that location in the first place. Don't forget that, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, very briefly then, uh, in terms of the terracing effect, um, our, our uh, policy on house extensions and, and more, more specifically the um, supplementary planning guidance on house extensions uh, requires a number of things to be done um, that uh, minimises the potential for a terracing uh, effect and that follows on to the um, really the next three points that you've raised in terms of roof line setback and uh, uh, footprint. Uh, so, so in this instance, we have a lower ridge, a lower ridge down to the extension. It's hipped. Um, as you can see from this, this elevation here, it's also set back from the, the principal elevation. Um, and, and, and the footprint doesn't, uh, doesn't really change in terms of the, the substantive property. It does come further forward here. Um, the garage, the, the garage element comes further forward at the front. But in terms of the proximity to the adjacent property at number 94, it doesn't go any closer to number 94 um, than, than currently exists. Um, and just finally, then, in terms of the, the comments that you raised around um, the separate unit of, of, of accommodation. Um, as I said in the presentation, uh, these proposals are described as extensions. Um, they are submitted on household development forms. Um, and, and there is a condition on that is that it can't, it can't be used as a separate unit of accommodation. We did consider whether a link uh, internally um, needed to be, uh, was required um, for that, inter that integrity inside. Um, but but we, we went against that view in the end because that could be blocked up at any time and it's not really very enforceable. Um, so uh, in terms of the impact on the conservation area, in terms of its footprint, um, that, that, that doesn't change. Um, th this element does widen the property slightly, um, but they are very modern new properties within the conservation area. And I think um, in, in, in its own context, uh, it doesn't harm the, the, the setting or the character of the Bell's Park conservation area in, in, in any way. Chair, if I can just add to that, if I may do so. Just to be clear for the benefit of the audience, um, the terracing roof line front setback and footprint comply with our current recommendations and guidance and therefore would not be able to be used as reasons for refusal that would be sustainable. I'm putting words into your mouth, I'm trying to do it from to interpret what that actually means in reality. And therefore, we come to the situation of whether the separate access, which we've already debated in the recovery condition for, could be used as a potential reason, bearing in mind we can't anticipate what might happen in the future. We can only see what is happening, or proposed to happen at the moment. And the relevance of the conservation area in this context, you don't believe, is such that it would have any adverse effect on what, as far as I can see, having spent 40 years in the construction industry, like you say, is a very nice extension development. It isn't something that's been clapped together. It's something that's been thought about and seems to have been designed to take into account the integrity of the whole. So would I be right in assuming that you don't see any potential sustainable reasons for objection that could be mounted for this particular development? Just very briefly through you, Chair. Policy HS 11 sets out a number of criteria for house extensions. Uh, following on from that, building on that in effect is the supplementary planning guidance uh, note 11 on house extensions. And again, that sets out criteria for these sorts of um, uh, developments. Um, and in our view, uh, this proposal meets all of the requirements of, of, of our adopted policies. Um, and there are similar extensions that can be seen throughout the borough. Thank you. Okay, Jeff. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just glad that I've just made it to as, as ever, my senior colleague has covered all the points absolutely comprehensively. And I think it's great. Um, I'm just wondering for the, the bit we couldn't see from the site because it could be stood out on, on the page, could we just see the, the floor plan just to see the extent? 
In terms of the single storey rear extension there, that's the kitchen and the living room uh, accommodation, that's this element here. Um, and then at first floor this is the extension, uh, which is the bedroom and the ensuite. Um, as, as I said in the presentation, the garage um, at the front is coming further forward than, than presently exists, uh, but it is still set back uh, 900 millimetres uh, from the, the principal elevation of the of the existing car. So and we can see from that that even the ground floor garage part comes no further forward than the central front elevation that the, the porch is built up to. And the other thing is, could you just indicate where the current rear ground floor bit is? Uh, so the, these are the existing uh, floor plans of, of the property. So there is a, um, a small extension here out of the, uh, at the back. Thank you. Okay, are there any other comments? Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Most of the comments are all about the footprints and so on, but the thing I'm a little bit worried about, uh, we've got it down uh, as a condition, is if, it, if it's going to be for the grandparents and such like who are quite ill, it means if they need to get from A to B, it means they've got to go outside. And I'm a little bit worried over no access between the two buildings, which means indirectly the two separate buildings, LB that is partition wall and everything else, I'm a little bit worried that if, if it's my parents I, and I need to get next door quick, I have to, get, I have to go out and come back in again. I'm just a little bit worried. I'm glad to see that uh, on uh, conditions, it's condition three. Uh, but that's one of those kind of conditions which will be very hard to uh, prove. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandy. But um, as the officer has said, it has been on staff and um, it's not on any other occasion. Um, if there aren't any other comments, the officer's recommendation is to approve this application. Uh, do we have a move on? Do you have a second there? Okay. Okay, all those in favour?
anyone trying to get into Hill Lane from the side streets would agree. St. Alton's School is almost opposite the site, with children being dropped off there, and, and tunnel traffic goes down the lane, just to the front of me. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for listening to me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is the applicant our agent here today? Is the Lord Council? Would you like to come forward, please, for that? Basically, one of the main ones is the size of the premises. It seems totally unsuitable for 37 children. It, it's not a big party by any stretch of the imagination. Both internally and, and the outside space does not seem in any way, shape, or form large enough or appropriate enough for 37, to house 37 children. Um, as one of my as, as one of the constituents has just mentioned, the car park facilities are bare, bare to the minimum right around that area. Um, you're going to have congestion both on Mill Lane itself and the side streets when parents are dropping off and picking up the children. Um, I've actually been, the lady who's just spoke, I, I, I called into her house last week and went and had a look in her back bedroom and, and the loss of privacy that she and the adjoining neighbours experience would be, would be such of a detriment and impact to her. Can I just say, by the way, I should just start off by saying that we're absolutely not against new businesses opening up on this card. That's not the reason why I'm here tonight. It's simply that we just don't think that this premises is in any way, shape, or form suitable for 37 children. It's a big undertaking. Um, and there's, there's a lot of privacy and there's the impact of the noise for the immediate residents as well. So we did have a petition with 42 signatures on. We have spoken to the residents who, who, are, who are not happy with, with the, what the potential impact might be of this, this new business. Okay, thanks for that. Thank you. So, any of the planning committee have any comments? David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Having been on the site visit, I found it very illuminating, and I'm going to put forward five words which I think would probably be a well known phrase or saying. Cat, no, swing, room two, to try and fit 37 young active children into that particular development and expect them to have some recreation space in a rear yard that is probably a quarter the size of this room is just ridiculous. So there's no way that this application is a practical solution to the problem of providing a day nursery, and I will be voting against it. Um, so, um, I take on board everything David said, and I think um, both Jeanette and the Minister were quite right with what they said. Um, 37 children in a room, in, 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 in a building that size, I think in one room, which is no bigger than my front room, the proposal from about 12 or 13, which was just, it, I mean, it's unbelievable. And in addition to that, there are massive concerns about parking in that area already. And at a time when people drop the kids off to St. Albans School, it's just going to have to it further. Um, so, I, I'm going to Sorry, can I just check if there's any other comments before we, we go to words for refusal? No? Okay, carry on then. Um, so I have got four words for that, which is um, having regards to the nature of the use and the number of the children's spaces proposed, the size of the site and its relationship with neighbouring properties, it is considered that the proposed change of use for children's bay nursery would detract from the amenities of nearby residential by virtue of increased noise and disturbance arising from the increased intensity in the eastern site. The proposal therefore contrary to policies HS12 and HS15 of the rural unitary development plan. Okay, we have a proposal to refuse to have a second plan. Thank you, Denise. And can we just uh, have a show of hands for the all those in favour of refusal, please? That's unanimous and that, that's carried as refused.
to um, go to agenda items now, which is page 61 to 66. Uh, Councillor Halston has uh, said she has an interest in this and she believes in the room. Marty, can we have a presentation, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Permission is sought for the erection of a new dwelling. The current scheme seeks consent for the details of the dwelling following the grant of outline consent in June 2013. The proposals have been amended, reducing the overall width of the proposed dwelling together with the overall height. The proposed dwelling is two storey and the properties on either side are bungalows. However, the ridge height of the proposed new house follows that of two Sandfield Park and the eaves height matches the ridge of four Sandfield Park. Uh, though this property is further away from the proposed at a distance of some eight metres. The roof design has been hipped to further minimise any impact and land levels differ within the street scene. The principle of a two-storey dwelling on the site has been established with the Grant of Outline Planning Commission and it's considered that the details submitted with this application are acceptable, having regard to the amendments that have been secured. Separation distances are achieved and the dwelling has been designed to ensure privacy to adjacent properties. A qualifying petition of objection has been received following the amendments um, and a subsequent reconsultation with neighbours. A further petition reinforcing the objections was also received. Thank you, Matthew. Can I just clarify do we have two lead petitioners to speak, or is there just one? Yeah. Just one. Okay, would you like to come forward, please? If you just state your name and address, please, and you have five minutes. Just switch on your microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Andy Armstrong, and my company is CLA. I'm a qualified architect, and I'm here to represent uh, the lead position. The lead position is assistant, which is my right behind me. I'll ask me to speak on his behalf. Um, we've obviously uh, been consulted on this matter um, as, as a local neighbour. Um, he lives in the 19 uh, Pikers Lane, which is the same map. Uh, is one that is going to probably uh, be one that's impacted the most by this development. Um, what we've done is we've, we have spent time, a lot of time with the council looking at the detailed design and obviously looking at the impact from, from a planning point of view only. And we've just come, come back two occasions, the first was a petition uh, to highlight the requirement. Sorry, can I just clarify, are you objecting to this? Yes. Okay, yeah. continue. Yeah, but, but, yeah. Um, but um, what, we've, what, we've, what we've done is we've looked at it, it, two, two, stage, two different schemes that we propose. The first scheme, quite rightly, uh, Matthew's just highlighted, has, has been reduced in size. But I think some of the concerns that we still have, coming back to our chair, yes, we, we acknowledge it residential consent on the site uh, is, is appropriate. But our concerns about the scale of this building and um, Matthew just highlighted in his report that uh, obviously the contours of the site, uh, it's very clear this is very, very steep, uh, steep road. And although they've picked up on the fact that they've reduced the ridge to the height of the bungalow to the right hand side as you use on the screen, it doesn't reflect the step in and a hierarchy in, in, the, in, the, um, in the street scene. So our, our main objections, if I just run through a couple of, couple of bullet points, if you don't mind. The first is the scale of massing, and I've started talking about that. But it's clear there's the two neighbours of bungalows, so you can see that in the street too. Uh, a dormant style bungalow, maybe, maybe would be appropriate if you're looking for additional attic spaces. What they've done is they've kept the eaves height the same, which is why you see the odd proportions of the, 